and I, just, I had her out on Pee Wee's Lake. It was just me and her. She was so light and trim. It was wonderful. Yeah, hey, you're a great pal, Raymond. With your help, she'll be mine. It goes on in here. Oh, Jerry. Uh huh. Answer it, will you? I say five in the oven. Yes, Mother. Answer the phone, Jerry. Hello, Fenton Regiment. In person. Oh, hello, Phyllis. What? Rob well, spill it, Bill. You sure? The club room? Our club room? Romance and pants. Phooey! Phil, you mean the girls' club room at the high school? But who said so? Mr. Milburn, but he's only the principal in any way. Look, Phil, if they're going to redecorate our club room, what are they going to do with all our things? Call a junk dealer. You mean the painters piled it all out in the hall, ping pong tables and everything? Oh, it'll get all mixed up and ruined. Yeah, we've got to do something about this right away. I'll change into something decent and be right over. Uh-huh, goodbye. Oh, thank you, wait. I just got an idea. So you ain't so. We can put our things in the rough house. Hey, no, you don't. Oh, you know, there's that little shack in the back of our house. Yeah, it's off low, but it's got three rooms, and nobody ever uses it anymore. Sherry, wait. Look, Bill, we'll move our things over in the morning. It'll make a swell book nook. No, 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 it's going to run me out. Quiet, Andy. Hey, Bill, I know. We can hook up a jukebox and make a sort of jive dive for night. Jive dive? Uh huh. I'll get the key from Dad and we'll clean it up. Phone the word, will ya? We need help. Yeah, go on, Bill. You can't have it, Sherry. What dive is this? I'm using the rough house this summer. Not this summer, youngster. It's going to be my boat house. Your what? Boat house. Look, I've even got a blueprint. See? First, I'm gonna knock out. These partitions. You are not. I use them for my workshop. Then, when I get the boat built. Build a boat? You ha! It's going to help me in the spare time. But the money, little man. I'm putting up the jack, cuddle bug. And when we get the boat built, we're going to move it over by the lake. The boat? The whole world. Look, bro, it's the rough house is going to be our boat house. Don't be silly. You can't move the rough house clear over to Seasley Blake. Bert, the moving service can I talk to the man and he said. Not the whole house. It's too heavy. They're going to slip a pair of skids over under it and drag it over easy as mud. And does Dad know about this? Well, not exactly. So the boat house is your private pipe dream, isn't it? I'm not worrying about Pop Hill go for it. But Andy, Dad's short on cash as it is. And now that he's going into real estate on his own... He'll make more money than ever, you'll see. Plus, I've got my paper out. Andy, wait! Nothing new since I'm going down to some high... Pop my head there, right? Andy, Ben, you wait right there. I'll be down in a set. Oh, Nash. A link with Dame. Hi, Raymond. Yeah, this is Andy. Yeah, everything is going according to plan. Are you kidding? She's all I can think about. And every time I close my eyes, there she is, so, so beautiful. Yeah, and last night I dreamed I had her out on Pee Wee's Lake. It was just me and her. She was so light and trim. It was wonderful. Yeah, hey, you're a great pal, Raymond. With your help, she'll be mine in no time. But don't tell any of the guys. I want to be a surprise. Uh, oh, I gotta go. I'm not alone. Yeah, I'll keep you posted. Andy, what were you talking about from the end? Mother? It didn't sound like nothing to me. How long have you been in the room? Just came in the room. Oh, that's nice. Andy. Andy. Yeah, Susie, what do you want? Do you know where the key to the rough house is? Oh, oh, no. Well, it's really important to Look, Susie, right? I've got something really important. I've got to go now. Really what? important. I'll talk to you later, Susie. Oh, brother. Okay. 
please. Oh, dear, I was hoping you could spare a few extra dozen. Sorry, the hands are just letting up a little. I guess it must be the heat. Well, I'll be needing more with Jim being graduated and coming home. Oh, your oldest boy, huh? Oh, yes, he's got us so excited. He called from Rockville Monday and he said he has this big surprise for us. Speaking of surprises, Miss Fenton, eggs has gone up. Not again. <laughs> yep, but a nickel a dozen. But they went up a nickel last week. Don't tell me your hens are on a set down strike. Well, ain't that. It's just that production well, here, costs are. Let me take these. Harrison, and why don't you come over here and sit in Grandpa Fenton's old rocker? It's one of the few things we have left of Grandpa Fenton. Um, you lived to be quite old, didn't you? Yes, you did. 98, as a matter of fact. You used to love to just sit there and rock and rock. So all the people are just like that. Good morning, Miss Harrison. Say, Mom, do you know where Dad is? Um, he's down to Mr. Hackley seeing about some office space, but I wouldn't bother in this it's morning, dear. It's all important, Mom. Sherry, wait, can I ask you something greater than you later? Well, let her look. She needs the exercise. Well, did Louise come in with you? 
No, she's still out working on Higgins, that client from the East. Where's Andy? I want him to help me measure something. Oh, Andy's out someplace. Oh, well, where did you say that tape was? Well, sit down, dear, and, and rest yourself, and I'll get it. <whistles> Henry? What did you say you were measuring? Oh, I uh, didn't say.
Eviction. Are they putting you out of your apartment? Seems like. Well, why? Me and uh, four dogs. Good gosh, Elmer. Why didn't you tell me about it? Must be something I could do. Let me think. You got a shanty back yonder. Oh, but I got to have that for my office. Ah, too bad. Now wait, Elmer. Wait a minute. Maybe I can find you a room. In that shack? If you help me move it. Uh, might. Meantime, I'll talk to the neighbors. We'll figure out something. Now, Elmer, don't you worry. All right, worry none. Could somebody else get that phone? I've got to go and get cleaned up. Hello, Fed residents. Oh, Sherry. Yes, dear. What do you need, dear? You miss Dad? Oh, that's too bad. Yes, he came home. Yes, he's here, dear, but he's upstairs changing. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. They're moving you out? All your things in the hallway? Oh, that's too bad, Sherry. You want to use the rock house? But, honey, your father... Yes, I understand, dear, but your father... Andy wants to use the rough house too? What for? Fill the boat. No, Sherry, Andy isn't here. All right, all right, dear. I'll, I'll talk to him when he gets here. Yes, Sherry, I understand you're desperate and you'll be right home. But Sherry, your father. Sherry, Sherry. She hung up before I could tell her that we're going to have to find something else to do with her things and Andy's boat. <laughs> Now what will you do? 
This one, 27, Myrtle Drive. Yeah. Well, then this must be the place. Well, this is the Fenton residence. Fenton, of course, it's Miss Fenton I should love to see. Oh, oh. I'll, well, I'll, I'll call her. Say, it's for you. Say, why do you call her Say? Because, well, that's her name. <laughs> well, to me, she's music. A lovely, beautiful music. My inspiration. My music. Larry, how nice. My darling, come. Come with me to the endless reaches of eternity. Away from this world. Out past the sea of stars. That's where time is the above face. It's wonderful, Larry. Well, it's just the beginning. <laughs> Sounds more like the ending to me. <laughs> well, the uh, beginning paragraph, I mean. The start of this new book. Mother, this is Larry Tatto. Larry, this is my mother. How do you do? How do you do? That's strange. I never really thought of you in that way at all. In what way? As having a mother. Isn't he wonderfully out of this world? Oh, yes, he certainly is. <laughs> well, uh, Mr. Chatfield, would you like to stay for lunch? Well, I should be delighted. Great. Well, uh, if you'll excuse me, I need it in the kitchen. Well, Larry, what progress on the novel? Oh, it's super. Really? Tell me. Well, you have just started the beginning, and It's magnificent. And of course, I've got my title. But no outline? Outline? I refuse to fit into a mold, to be cut into a pattern. You see, the pirate must be shapeless and formless, springing free and unhampered for the soul of a man. But surely, Poe and Hawthorne and Catherine. All of them. Did Homer know where he was going? William Shakespeare didn't fool around with a synopsis. Maybe, maybe not at first. And another thing. I must see you every day. Bye. I can't write a word without you. You're my inspiration. I need to be near you to know your every thought. Well, if you feel that way. I do. Then you ought to speak to Father first. Well, I will. I'll tell him to bring a desk in here and a typewriter. <laughs> oh, Larry, you're a character. Oh, but I'll tell you what. There's a little house out in back. We call it the rough house. But we have perfect place for the writing of your book. Well, is it really rough? Not too bad. You can work out there entirely undisturbed. Well, as long as I can see you. <laughs> Just leave everything to me. No! Oh! Who the devil starts this shirt? It feels like a dog collar! Oh, Father. <laughs> what? What's this? <laughs> <laughs> I can hardly believe it. Believe what, Father? Well, that you met him in college. What I mean is, well, he seems older. Mm, well, genius is ageless, Uncle George Bernard Shaw. Well, he is quite a young man, really. A promising young man. Faye, what is he promising? <laughs> <laughs> a novel, Father. Isn't that wonderful? Only time will tell. <laughs> so, uh, you're writing a novel. Mr. Larrabee. Chatfield, Father. Well, Chatfield, uh, how's it going? Oh, I'll wind it up in two or three weeks. About finished, eh? Well, he hasn't started it yet. I have to. I've got my beginning and my title. Hmm. Uh, what are you calling it? Get on the barn. That sounds uh, decisive. Uh, tell me, Patfield, how many novels have you written in all that? Well, this is my first. And you're going to wrap it up in three weeks. Well, that's right, I did. The damn young man in three weeks. You don't say. Yep, he just locked himself in a hotel in three weeks. Out came the damn young man. This, uh, this Soroyan, did he come out too? Uh, Larry, would you like to freshen up a bit? Good idea. Well, I will. You'll find the, the room at the head of the stairs, to your left. If you'll excuse me. Sure thing. And say, old man, my razor's there in the medicine cabinet. This beard will never come off. Never. <laughs> and you can say the same for Dirt on the bun. <laughs> you are very nice, Father. I think you're trying to encourage Art. Art? I thought you said his name was Larry. Larry Chatterby. Now, Father. Look here, Betty. Just what is this hairy age to you? Oh, really? You're not engaged to it or something. Heavens no, I'm just an inspiration. All I do is sit. Just sit? Just sit. I'm his muse, his literary model. All artists have a model. But what do you get out of this? He's dedicating the book to me, 
father. Imagine that. <laughs> of course. If the book sells, we might continue on a more realistic basis. You mean if Dead on the Vine is published, you'll marry this refugee from a barber shop? I think that's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> then that's one old maid in my family. <laughs> oh, hey, Bob, give me the key to the rough house, quick! Dad, don't you let him! Wait a minute, wait a minute! Yes, yes Bob, first Dad. Bob! One at a time, you two. Now, Andy, you say you want the rough house? So do I, he's just a child. <laughs> It'll make a swell go out, Pop. Oh, no, you have these partitions. You will not. Dad, I've got to have it for a club. I'm just throwing it out of the height. Well, I don't wonder. Father, listen. You
Here's some aspirin and a glass of water here. How could such a normal day have turned into this nightmare? Well, don't worry, dear. I've been giving this some thought, and I think I have some solutions. Andy, you can build your building in the garage. And Sherry, you and Phyllis can put your things down in the unfinished part of the basement. And Susie, you and Mary Jane can use that cute little sun porch with the glass in sun porch for your playhouse. Doesn't that sound fun? See, dear, everything's under control and everyone's happy, right? Yeah, well, what about the ladies from the home canning club? Well, uh, almost everyone. Oh, maybe we could finish off part of the basement for the home canning club. Ella, not the basement. Not until I get the business established. And then there's Elmer and four dogs. His what here? My four dogs. Elmer's being evicted from his apartment. Oh, Elmer, that's a shame. Yep. <laughs> Henry, Elmer, don't anyone move. I'll be right back. Where are you going, Mom? Well, I've got a solution that I think will kill two birds with one stone. What? Well, Sherry, would you take the rest of the pies out of the oven and put the rolls in? And, Andy, I want you to run down to Jake's Corner and get six lemons for the lemonade. There's money in that jar in the kitchen, Jake, all right? Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, Mom. Don't you worry, Elmer. Well, I ain't worrying none. I think I'm finally going to do some measuring. Boy, I better call Phyllis and bring up to date what's going on. Sherry, wait, can I ask you something first? Sure, Susie, go ahead. <coughs> well, don't you think Andy is, well, kind of young? <laughs> Not to hatch, don't be ridiculous. He's much too young to build a boat, and I told him so. He's such an infant. No, I mean, isn't he too young to be in love? In love? Andy? He was no hard throw from a sore finger. I fully expect to fall in love with myself long before he does. Hello? Oh, hi, Phyllis. Wait till I tell you what happened. Yeah, I asked my dad, but it seems the whole neighborhood wanted it first. Yeah, that's right. We don't get the rough house. My dad's going to drag it up front and use it for an office. Well, not drag it. But my mom said we could use part of the basement. Yeah, it'll work. We'll just have to carry the things down the stairs. Uh-huh. Call the others. We'll start after lunch. Yeah, so long, Phil. Susie? You better take the pies out and put the rolls in. Life upon the wicked stage ain't nothing what a girl supposes. Not no more. Well, 
If they ain't getting it, who is? Mr. Fenton? Mr. Fenton? Yep. What is he wanted for? Office. Office? His real estate office? Yep. Well, if that don't be all. Yep. It would have made such a nice chicken house for Joe and me. You know what I mean? Yep. I just don't know what we're going to do now. Well, me too. You too? Why you? Needed it. What? The rough house? Yep. Well, why? For home. Oh, you lost your apartment, Elmer? Yep. Oh, why? Four dogs. Oh. <laughs> Got an idea. What? Your old granary. Oh, that old granary on our property? Nope, it's too far gone. Joe and I thought about it, but the roof leaks and the supports are weak, and, and it would just cost too much to fix it up. Joe and I couldn't do it. We just couldn't. I could. You could? Yep. Why, Elmer, I believe you could. You're plenty handy. Yep. And we got all that lumber out the back just laying around it. Oh, but Elmer, we couldn't afford to pay you nothing for them repairs. Wouldn't have to. What? Wouldn't have to. Well, you couldn't do them all repairs for nothing. Won't. What? Won't. But maybe I could live in the upstairs. Well, when I get done with it. But what about your dogs? Well, I, I figure I could build a pen around back, and that way they wouldn't bother your chickens much. <laughs> oh, you don't need to worry about that. I got a little bandy rooster that keep your dogs in tow. Deal? Deal. Oh, I can't tell. Wait to tell Joe and the chickens. They just aren't going to believe it. I tell you, they just aren't. Um, Elmer, tell Miss Fenton when she gets back that I was here and there ain't no hard feelings at all. And Elmer, when can you start? Oh, tomorrow, I reckon. Tomorrow it is. Bye. Oh, hi, Elmer. Want a chocolate? Oh. Oh, Larry, I'm so thrilled you like the attic. Oh, yes, yes. It will be the perfect atmosphere for the writing of my new book. And I will be able to see my music every day. Oh, Larry. Hi, Elmer. Larry's going to make his office in our attic. Isn't that wonderful? It's in, it sure is better than the rough house. You can see the sunset from the west window. It's simply beautiful. Well, you are simply beautiful. Oh, Larry. Stay here and talk to Elmer while I run down and get Dad's old typewriter. I won't be late. Are you a relative of the Fenton family? Nope. Then uh, what is your purpose, my good man, for being at the Fenton residence? Handy man. Oh, I, I see. Well, my purpose goes far beyond that. In that, it is here, in this humble home that I, Larry Chappell, the second, will create my first and most memorable novel, Dead on the Vine. To you and to perhaps many others such as yourself, a task such as this seems far from reality. To think to hope for, to dream for, to hope to accomplish, but according to the words of Vince Lombardi, the difference between impossible and possible lies in one's determination. Thus, this tells me that if my determination is strong enough, that that is all it will take to become a good writer. Do you agree? Speak the truth, man, and leave thereafter. An old Chinese proverb, early 16th century. Advice? 
is what we ask for when we already know the answer, but wish we didn't. Grandpappy, 
And my brand new sister-in-law, Margie. Hello. Oh no, the pleasure is all mine. <laughs> so where are you going to find them? Right here for the rest of the summer. Here? In Greeny? That's right. But Jim, you should have let us know. Oh, Mom, don't worry about us. Besides, the honeymoon cottage is already picked out. Really? But where, Jim? Well, out back. Here we go again! <laughs> the rough house. We're gonna fix it all up. Uh, uh, well, come on, somebody, say something. What do you think of the idea? <laughs> Well, it's sort of breathtaking. And so, <laughs> no. Practically unheard of. We'll be the envy of the whole neighborhood. You certainly will. Jim can tell us what a wonderful little house it is. No paint, no lights, no heat. Oh, just wait till we get through with it. But Jim, you'd be much more comfortable in here. Marty can have my room, and, and Jim can sleep with Elbert and Ford off. <laughs> Uh, no thanks. Uh, it's the rough house for us. Besides, seclusion is what we want. Yeah, nobody ever gives us a second glance. Hey, I'd like to get started cleaning it right away. Well, if that's what you want, and Sherry, Andy, and run out and open it up. It'll need an airing. Wait, here, after lunch. Then we can all pitch in and have it. Oh, yeah. We'll put in a shower. We'll, we'll, we'll paint the outside. We'll paper the inside. <laughs> well, I swear. Paintbrush myself. By tomorrow morning, nobody will recognize the place. Well, it looks like the rough house is settled at last. We'll just have to figure out the rest of this after lunch. <coughs> Come on, everybody. Lunch is waiting. Uh, I don't know, dear, but I'm starved. <laughs> Subject. 
I offered to help dissect her frog. <laughs>
Well, it's just here that everyone seemed to have a need for it. But we've worked it all out. Well, all it's at Father's real estate office and Mrs. Harrison and Elmer. You called? Oh, Elmer, I went to Mrs. Harrison to see if I could fix it with her for you to live on in that old granary on back of her lot, but she wasn't home. Yeah, so that's that's because she was here. Here? Yep. But why? Uh, apologize. To who? You? Oh, there was no need for that. She was just upset about her chickens and all. Her chickens? Yes, dear, her chickens. And she was upset, and Joe was upset, and everyone was just upset. <laughs> Not no more. What? <laughs> Not no more. <laughs> she is Hi, what about I? Worked it out? We worked it out. Me and her? Well, want to tell us how, Elmer? Uh, yep. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm fixing her old granary for chickens and building me an upstairs. Well. That's but what about your dogs? In a pen around back? Well, I'll be. Huh. Well, that just leaves the ladies at the home candy club. Oh, dear, I've already decided that the ladies are going to have to continue cooking in Ellen Brown's basement another year. That's all. But... What about your real estate office? Here? No, don't worry about that. As soon as we sell some property, perhaps we can buy one of our own. Uh, in the meantime, it looks like old Mr. Hackley hasn't seen the last of me. <laughs> well, should we all get started cleaning up the rough house? Uh, I mean, Honeymoon Cottage. Oh, hey, I like that better than rough house. I wish we had <laughs> enough to get you into that new development down on Elm Street, but. It's $150 down and until the business is established. Oh, Dad, don't worry about us. The honeymoon cottage will feed us fine for us. Daddy, what's a honeymoon? Well, Susie, uh, it's, uh, well, uh, mother. <laughs> <laughs> well, Susie, a honeymoon is a little trip or vacation that married people take right after they first get married because they love each other and they want to be alone together. Your father and I went to Niagara Falls on our honeymoon. Oh, that's nice. So, Andy, where are you going on your honeymoon? What? I said, where are you going? I'm not deaf. I heard you. Mom, what are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know, Andy. Susie, Andy will have to grow up, find a bride, and fall in love all before he goes on a honeymoon. Well, he already is in love. I don't know what you're talking about. Mark, too, I hear you telling Raymond's on the phone all about her. Mom, she's crazy. Susie, <laughs> 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 what did you hear Andy say? That she was all he could think about when she's so beautiful. She was all alone with her on feeling great. She's so light and trim.
whatever one. 